let's take a closer look at this chromatic interval map that we've made of the major scale. The th first thing that I'd like to observe is this. The distance between neighboring scale degrees is always some kind of a second. So between scale degree 1 and scale degree 2, we have a second. Between 2 and 3, we have a second. Between 3 and 4, we have a second, and so forth. There are two other ways that we can think about this, though, and I, I want to dig into this a little bit because I think this will be useful for when we start making major scales on our own. One of the ways of thinking about it is this. When we write a major scale, when we actually physically write a major scale on the staff, we don't skip any lines or spaces. We always start on a note, and we always go to the very next open line or space. For instance, if we are writing out a C major scale, as we, as we did here, we're going to start a middle C. So I'm going to fill in that note head that is on the ledger line just below the treble clef. The very next note that I'm going to fill in, which is scale degree 2, is going to fill in the next available space, which is that space that is right below the treble clef staff. Scale degree 3 is going to go to the next available line, which is the first line on the treble clef staff. Scale degree 4 is going to go to the next available space, which is the first space on the treble clef staff. Scale degree 5 is going to go to the next available line, which is the second line on the treble clef staff. Scale degree 6 is going to go to the next available space, which is the second space on the treble clef staff. And scale degree 7 is going to go to the next available line, which is the third line. And then scale degree 8 is going to go on the next available space, which is the third space on the treble clef staff. So we don't skip any lines or spaces as we're moving up the scale. Again, that's just another way of saying we're moving by a second, or we're, the distance between each scale degree is a second. Another way of thinking about that is that we use each of the seven letter names in the major scale once and only once. Not less, not more. So scale degree one is on letter name C. Scale degree 2 is on letter name D. Scale degree three, degree 3 is on letter name E. Scale degree 4 is on letter name F. Scale degree G, I mean, sorry, scale degree 5 is on letter G. Scale degree 6 is on letter A. Scale degree 7 is on letter B. So we use each one of the seven letter names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, once and only once, or exactly once. We don't skip any letter names. We don't double up any letter names. Now, of course, when we get to the end of the scale, which is the beginning of the scale in the next octave, we do come back to the note that we started on C. But that's the only place that we do something that even looks like doubling up. Otherwise, one and only one letter name. Here's another thing to think about. We talked about when we were making chords, we talked about the idea of the half step. The half step is the smallest distance that you can travel on the piano keyboard. Very often, that's the distance between a white note and the adjacent black note. For instance, from F to F sharp. That's the distance of a half step. But it can also be the distance between two adjacent white notes if they don't have a black note in between, say from C to B. A half step is just another way of saying a minor second. What is a minor second? A minor second is a second that has one half step. So when we're talking about major scales, very often we will use these two terms synonymously, or, or we'll use these two terms to mean the same, same thing, the half step and the minor second. We also learned another term, which is the term for two half steps put together, or a whole step. A whole step is when you travel the distance of two half steps. Well, guess what else is traveling the distance of two half steps? A major second. A major second is simply a second that has two half steps. So we can use this term whole step 
to mean the same thing as a major second. And I mention this because very often when we talk about the major scale, we talk about not minor seconds and major seconds, but more often half steps and whole steps. So I want to go through and talk about the pattern that we've discovered, not in terms of major seconds and minor seconds, but in terms of half steps and whole steps. So between C and D is a major second, which means that is going to be a whole step. Between D and E, or between scale degree 2 and 3, is a major second, which means that's going to be a whole step. Between scale degree 3 and 4, we're going to have a half step. Between 4 and 5, we're going to have a whole step, which is the same thing again as a major second. Between 5 and 6, we're also going to have a major second or a whole step. And between 6 and 7, we're also going to have another major second or a whole step. And then between 7 and 8, we have another minor second or half step. And I say this because more often than not, we think about the major scale, even though this pattern of minor and major seconds is absolutely precise and absolutely correct, more often than not, we talk about it in terms of half steps and whole steps. And so we think about this pattern as whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. One other thing I want to point out that I think is pretty cool about the piano keyboard. Notice how the piano keyboard actually physically embodies this difference between whole and half steps in the major scale. We can physically see a whole step on the piano. For instance, between C and D, we know that that's a whole step because between C and D, we have this black key right here. We know that between D and E, there is a whole step because between them, we see this black key. Between F and G, we know that there's a whole step because between them, we see this black key. Between G and A, same thing. There's a black key so that we know that it's a whole step. Between A and B, there's a black key so that we know that there is a whole step. We know that there is a half step between E and F because, look, there's no black key in between there. That's a half step. We know that there's a half step between B and C. We can see it visually because there's no black key in the middle. So I think that's a very cool thing that the, the piano keyboard physically embodies this version or this, this difference between half steps and whole steps. Okay, so let me come back to the main point of this. This pattern, and I'm going to erase some of this extra stuff here, this pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, that pattern is the embodiment, or, or better yet, the, the technical definition of a major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. In the next few videos, we're going to see what we can do once we start using that pattern, and once we start moving that pattern around the keyboard.